So I want to give some quick facts about line five, because um, that's a lot of the reason why many of us are here is because of that particular pipeline. As it mentioned, it's it's 30 inch pipeline that runs throughout the Upper Peninsula and Lower Peninsula, but at the crossing, it's broken to two 20 inch lines right here. And then what they have done is they have uh, bypassed a very important environmental permit, which is a presidential permit for expansion. Um, and they have increased the capacity. They have done no safety improvements to this pipeline whatsoever. All they've done is flipped a switch, turned up more horsepower, and they're now pumping 2.1 million gallons of oil per day more than before. And the, the big issue is it's 100 feet below the surface at this location. If any spill, worst case scenario, I want to lay this out too, worst case scenario in Enbridge's eyes is that they would shut that pipeline down in eight minutes. In that amount of time, 1.5 million gallons will have spilled. Three hours, crews, well, with certain currents, it would have hit Mackinac City and Mackinac Island. Six hours, it would have spread throughout the straits, uh, reaching Wilderness State Park, is our estimate, based on currents. And then 12 hours, Sheboygan, at the very least. And then within a day, Beaver Island. And again, it took them at 17 hours to be told that there was a spill and to report it in the Marshall spill. And, and so it's just very critical that this company be held to the absolute highest standards above and beyond current regulations because those suck too. And so I just really encourage everyone to grab a postcard, fill out uh, the, the uh, signature area and reach out to FIMSA, which is the federal regulators and the EPA, and ask them to tighten these standards. A couple things that we just really want people to do is for this particular pipeline, line, uh, line five, which is 60 years old, we really want people to encourage our regulators, especially Snyder, the, the governor, to make an expand or make a replacement of this pipeline. No expansion whatsoever, full replacement. And then we want him to say absolutely no tar sands whatsoever. <laughs> Never tar sands. So, 350.org, you can see the petition. It's also up on the, um, the website for this rally. And you can, it's just easy, you click on it and you can fill it out and it shoots an email right to where we need it to go. And I also, um, I just wanna pick on a couple of people because my family's in the crowd and a lot of people were impacted by the Marshall spill. And so I would just like a couple people to stand up and just shout out what the most frustrating thing about that spill was. <laughs> Mick, what about you? Mick did some amazing photography that's been picked up by press all across the world. The four young men that were in the river with these oil skimmers for hours a day working on this oil. And then the other thing is, we woke up that Sunday and there's this terrible stink all through Battle Creek. It's an out un outrageous stink. talk about the river, but it's all the rest of the wetlands in and around Battle Creek that have been affected by this will never be the same. Yes, Jeff Bolster will speak to that. They're still digging up stuff in the river by the dam. Anyone else? Was anyone else, any of the spills I mentioned? Repeat what he said because people couldn't hear it. Jeff Spolster will be a great spokesman for that, but what he said is that they're still cleaning it up. There's hundreds of acres that still remain in the 40 miles of river. In fact, one of the hardest hit locations is 40 miles down. Uh, at the very end of where they contained it, there's still hundreds of acres of oil. And so uh, they'll, Jeff will speak to that beautifully. Well, thank you very much. And I really appreciate everyone coming out. And please talk to your neighbors. Tell them to talk to their neighbors. And